G'day, Year 9. Welcome back to McGrathematics, where today we're kicking off Term 4 with a new topic called Earning Money. Uh, this is a good topic. It's relevant for any student at any level because it covers the mathematics of employment and taxation, which is um, two very important things if you want to exist in a society. Today's lesson is on salaries, wages, and overtime pay. So before we do some maths, we should probably just have a quick chat about what those three words mean in case you aren't aware. So first off, we have wages. So your wages is your per hour rate of pay. So if you are an employee who earns money per hour rather than per year, you are on what's called a wage. Okay, the alternative to a wage is what's called a salary, which is where you are just given a fixed amount that you will earn for the year. And then typically that yearly salary will be split into fortnightly or weekly or monthly payments. So salaries are really good because if you um, have a sick day or if you take a week of holiday, you still get paid for the time that you aren't at work because you're getting paid the same amount each week because it's a consistent salary. Whereas wages, if you're not working, typically you aren't earning. Um, but that can be good because with a wage, the more you work, the more you earn and you can get overtime hours. So overtime is referring to an increase in your usual wage or your usual salary as a result of you working some extra hours or some specific days. So for some jobs on weekend, you'll get higher rates, that's called overtime. And some places, if you work on a public holiday, you'll get paid an extra increase on your typical wage. Okay, let's do some maths. So before we rip into some questions, we've got to have a quick chat about how many weeks there are in one year. That's actually kind of a complicated question. So the first thing we need to talk about is, are there 365 days in a year? What do you reckon? Well, the answer is uh, yes, normally, but sometimes no, because you've got to keep in mind that once every four years, we have what's called a leap year. So we don't have 365 days, we have 366 days. So on average, every year actually has 365 and a quarter days. And that's why every four years we make up for it with one extra day. So if we want to find out how many weeks there are in an average year, we should be doing 365.25, that's the number of days, divided by seven because there's seven days in a week. If we run this calculation, we get about 52.18. So there typically won't be exactly 52 weeks in a year, it's gonna be 52 and a bit, so 52 and a couple days. So if we wanted to be super, super accurate with our calculations, if we were going from years to weeks, instead of using 52, we should use 52.18. However, the issue with this is that it makes our working out a bit messier, a lot of decimals, a lot of rounding, it makes it a bit harder to follow. So for the interest of simplicity, and this might be a bit controversial, for this entire topic on this channel, I'm gonna be using 52 as the number of weeks in a year, just to make the working out nice and simple and easy to follow, okay? It's slightly less accurate, but um, I don't really care. So here we go, example one. We've got Remy working as an engineer, earning a salary, so a yearly payment of $70,200 per annum. So per annum is Latin for every year. He works 40 hours per week, find out how much he earns each fortnight, each month, and each hour that he works. Okay, cool, so for question A, uh, we have his yearly salary, we wanna find his fortnightly pay. So we of course know there are 52 weeks in a year, and a fortnight is two weeks, so there must be 26, fortnights in each year. So to go from a yearly pay to a fortnightly pay, all we need to do is divide by 26. So we'll split our salary into fortnightly payments of $2,700. Okay, now for question B, each month. So we of course know that in every year there are 12 months. So all we need to do here is just divide our yearly salary by 12. We get an answer of 5,850 each month. And now for question C, we're finding his hourly rate of pay, given that he is gonna be earning a certain amount each week and he works 40 hours per week. So first thing we should do is we should find how much money Remy is earning each week. We can then take that number and divide it by 40 and we'll get our hourly rate. Okay, so 52 weeks in a year, if we're using our simplified version. So we'll do 70,200 divided by 52. That's a weekly pay of 1,350. Or alternatively, we could have taken our fortnightly pay from question A and just cut in half, and then you get the same answer. Okay, there's our weekly pay. Let's divide this by 40, and we get an answer of $33.75 per hour. Gets us our $70,200 salary. 
Okay, sweet. Moving on for the next one. We have Sheree is being paid $3,000, sorry, $3,600 each week as a brain surgeon. Sheree is paid her salary monthly. How much will her monthly pay be? Okay, so we have a bit of a trick question here because we have our weekly pay and we want to get up to our monthly pay. So the question is, how many weeks are there in one month? Which is a bit of a dodgy question because a month is typically 30 or 31 days and a week is seven days. So it's not going to be a nice even whole number. So if we just multiplied by four, we'd be losing out on a few days. So we can't just do that. So converting from weeks to months is pretty tricky. The smarter way to handle this is we're going to convert from a weekly pay to an annual salary and we can then turn our yearly salary into a monthly pay. So that's the easiest way, in my opinion, to go from weeks to months. You've got to go the scenic route through the yearly pay. So we'll take our weekly pay, we'll multiply it by 52 and we'll get Sheree's annual salary of $187,200. Okay, now to get our monthly pay, we'll take our annual salary, we will divide this by 12, split it into 12 monthly payments of $15,000 and 600, sorry, $15,600. If we just taken out 3,600 and multiplied by four, we'd be a bit short and we'd be inaccurate because there is more than four weeks in every month, except for February. All right, sweet, on to the next one. Example three, we have Travis working as a dog groomer. He's charging $28 per hour. However, on Saturdays, he charges time and a half wages. Okay, what this means is every time Travis works an hour on Saturdays, he's gonna be paid for one and a half hours. That's what time and a half means. And on Sundays, he's charging double time. So if he works one hour on Sundays, he's gonna charge for two hours. So he'll charge $56. Okay, Travis worked from 9 a.m. until 3 p.m. from Thursday to Monday. How much will this earn him? All right, so we're first of all gonna figure out how many normal hours Travis has worked, and then we'll figure out our time and a half hours, and we'll figure out our double time hours. Okay, so first thing to note is that from nine till three each day, that's gonna be six hours each day and we're doing this over five days. Okay, now let's talk about Saturday and Sunday because that's where things get interesting. So on Saturday, you're gonna be working six hours from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Question for you go is, if you're working six hours, but you are being paid time and a half, how many hours are you gonna get paid for? So if you worked one hour, you're gonna get paid for one and a half hours. We're working six hours, so if we times that by one and a half, we're gonna get nine hours being actually paid for. Okay, so six hours working at time and a half, six lots of 1.5 gets us nine. Okay, so on Saturday, even though Travis works six hours, he's gonna earn money for nine hours. Hopefully that's clear. And on Sunday, he's gonna be working for six hours, but he's working at double time, so he's gonna be paid for 12 hours because that's double six. Okay, sweet. So on a regular day, he's earning six hours worth of money. On Saturday, he's being paid for nine hours and on Sunday, he's being paid for 12 hours. So to find our total hours that we're being paid for, we're gonna add the Thursday, the Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. So three regular days and two overtime days. Gets us a total of 39. So we're being paid for 39 hours of work, even though we didn't work 39 hours. That's how overtime works. So we'll multiply 39 by Travis's hourly wage of $28 and we get our total pay for the week as $1,092. Not too bad for five days work. Okay, sweet, I'm gonna finish off with a challenge question. So this is Tappy, he is a basketball coach and he worked for 35 hours at his normally hourly rate of pay, which is, we don't know it. He worked for six hours at time and a half wages and then five hours at double time wages. He earned 9.50 and 40 cents in total. What is Tappy's hourly wage? Okay, so if example three made a lot of sense to you, uh, I'll encourage you to pause the video and see if you can crack this one by yourself. Otherwise, I'm gonna dive into the solution uh, right now. Okay, so the key to this question is, we have to figure out not how many hours Tappy has worked for, we've gotta figure out how many hours he's been paid for. Okay, so we had 35 normal hours, so he's being paid for 35 hours. Now, once again, he's worked for six hours at time and a half wages, okay? One and a half lots of six is nine. So he's worked six hours, but he's gonna be paid nine hours. And for his double time, he worked for five hours at double time. So he'll be paid for 10 hours. Okay, so we've got our six hours at time and a half. We've got our five hours at double time. So we've got nine hours being paid and 10 hours being paid. 
as well as the original 35 hours. So if we do 35 plus 9 plus 10, we get 54 hours. So Tappy is being paid for 54 hours of work. Okay, so what we need to do now is divide our monthly pay, 9.50 and 40 cents. We'll divide that by 54, and then we'll get our answer of $17.60. If you got that by yourself, you're doing really well, so congratulations. Okay, that's gonna do it for today's lesson. There are some qu practice questions for you guys to rip into on Google Classroom. Please let me know if I can give you uh, any further help. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.